So today, um, we're here at, uh, at services, uh, school, service of students, um, just to get an idea for the foundation, um, what, uh, what kind of students we need, what kind of kids we need, just to pick their brain up a little bit, to see how much of potential they have. Um, mostly looking for full sentences, um, so we can build a profile for the kids. Uh, Looks like right now they're in assembly, um, so we're currently waiting for them to, to finish assembly. Once they finish, we'll, we'll go to the classroom to, to, to take the survey, so stay tuned. All right, uh, welcome back everybody. Um, on to the next video here. I'm just going to be adding my commentary as uh, the video play here once again i am at the services primary and secondary school in freetown sierra leone i went there to implement um, the organization mohiro foundation which is a non-profit charity organization for students in sierra leone um, to try to One thing I also wanted to do is maybe to, to have them on the group entity. also and explain to them the foundation so they know what it's about. The nation products and just, um, just words and, and things to motivate and inspire children to reach their full potential in, uh, in Sierra Leone. So this is um, the first school that we were working with which is services um, it was a school that i attended myself as a child when i was about maybe 10 11 years old um, so, so i'm right now i'm i'm with um mrs massacre she's uh the head teacher one of the head teachers of the whole school She's uh, giving a speech right after I was finished. Yeah, so we're basically just doing an introduction to the students. Um, just to kind of let the student know what exactly we're there do to do, um, which was to give them a survey. There's Abu. I remember I, I did a case study on Abu, who was just a peace sign. So uh, we, we, we had to explain to the children, you know, what the purpose of the survey was. So that's what I was doing, going to different sections of the classroom because the classroom had like three separate sections. It's like this big, this big room with um, about three or four, yeah, I believe four different sections separated with different, different teachers and student teaching um, with the same class level. They're all JSS1, which I believe is equivalent to maybe um, grade four or five here in the States. I'm not sure. Um, but as you can imagine, if you can look at the kids that are in the class, um, their ages, it's equivalent to the age of, of the children who are attending um, grade, grade, grade school here in the States. So that's my cousin, Sheku, he's handing out the surveys as well to, to the students. to I came to the other section you know 
so yeah, it just basically give the student a brief. Okay, yes, yes, absolutely. So and, and I had to make it quick. The foundation I started because I went to school of services at the primary level. I just want to give you guys some questionnaire forms so you can fill out. There's no wrong answers, but make sure that nobody copy your answer because based on your answer is how you'll be selected um, to, to be part of the program. So write uh, the, 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 the answers your best, uh, the best of your knowledge so we can try to understand your potential, you know, how we can try to help um, with, with scholarships, school fees, whether it's backpacks, uh, hygiene products. So uh, we're going to hand out some forms so you can... Uh... So I had to, we had to make that quick and just to kind of touch on this, um, as I was, you know, I was handing this the paper out, you know, um, kind of had to explain to the students too and then read some of these words and sentences um, so they can understand what we are, re we, are, we are looking for you know when they're filling out this survey it's a really basic basic survey and, and I spoke to them but I wasn't sure if they actually understood my my English because I have you know with my my American accent that I have now um, when I'm speaking English, sometimes I think I've explained it in the previous video. Sometimes I, I come, it comes off I, like you know, I'm speaking a little too quick for them to understand. So a lot of times I, I leave it to the teachers so they can um, tell the students um, what we're looking for um, exactly with, with them speaking because the students are used to the teacher's accent, you know, the English that the teachers speak. So when I speak sometimes in English, I feel like they're not understanding me. I feel like I'm just speaking, you know, with, um, they're not receiving any uh, understanding from me with my, you know, obviously I, st I went to school here in the, in the States. So sometimes I think that there's, there's a little bit of a barrier, um, which, you know, it, it, could, it could, you know, on, on, on the understanding aspect of, you know, us understanding one another. You know, yes, I can, I can speak the, the Creole, which is uh, the broken English, um, but I'm not as fluent as I, um, maybe when I was younger, when I lived there, because when I moved to the States, I, you know, I didn't really speak it much unless I was with my parents, you know, at home. But I was away most of the time in school, but I moved out on my own. Um, so I, you know, the broken, the broken English, if I would have, if I would have spoken Creole, I would have had a tough time expressing my views, my thoughts to the students because, um, like I said, I left when I was a kid, when I was very young. So Creole, broken English, wasn't an option for me um, when, I'm in, when I'm visiting these schools to, to speak it. Sometimes I do mix it. I mix it um, with, with some words and, you know, that I know I'm, I, I'm, I'm certain that I can get my point across in, in Creole. But when I'm not certain, I, 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 I just, I need, I have to speak English. But I, I always limited my English speaking. I limited speaking English because, like I said, I wanted the student to understand me. So I, I left that for the, for the teachers. Um, as, as one of the teachers is um, speaking now, you know, explaining to the students, you know, this, the survey was meant for individuals each and every one of them to fill it out on their own and not copy each other. Why do you want to study at university or college? Number two, what is the best to do this and education? Explain. Three years, or 20 years, or 22 years. What is your view? Who is your view? Which person do you admire most? Which person do you see that you want to follow? Or that 
So the teacher he's explaining and trying to um, it's, you know, explaining so they can understand what the questions are. That's what I'm doing myself. I'm, I'm trying to say, you know, explain it to the students in the most simplistic form for them to understand the wording of the survey. I mean, this, it's a really basic, maybe one or two words in India was maybe advanced, um, but um, generally what we did, we made the questions really basic as possible, you know, because um, a lot of these students are, are not really up to par, you know, they're not really up to par, so even understand some of these simple questions that we, we wrote down on the form. Yeah, these uh, teachers did an incredible job, you know, he's explaining the same thing. Just simple questions like, you know, like what do you want to study? Um, at a college level, university. If he was to attend a college, what do you want to study? What's the subject, right? What do you want to be in future? Right. And then what do you want to be when you grow up? You know? Simple question. What do you want to be when you grow up after you're done with your education, your schooling, right? So it, they are really simple questions, right? But at the same time, we're measuring, we're measuring if we're measuring if a student can understand that if you're going to a college to study a certain subject, right? Like if you say you want to go and study um, law, for example, you want to study law in college, right? How are you going to answer the next question that we're asking you? What do you want to be when you grow up? Are they, you know, are those, are the questions going to match? If you say you want to study, you want to, you want to study law in college, and then the next question we say, what do you want to be when you grow up? You write down, I want to be a nurse. There's contradictions, you know, because if you want to study law in college, that means when you grow up. You, want, you, you, you would want to become a lawyer, right? To practice law. So, so these were the basic things that we were looking for on how the students were thinking, what their thought process was. If you're somebody who wants to be, who wants to study medicine, a lot of students said they want to study medicine, right? Um, and, and some, not all. Some and some came down to when we asked, "What do you want to be when you grow up, or what is your dream? When you, what's your dream, right?" Some wrote down a footballer. You know, they want to play football when they grow up. You know, some wrote down they want to be an entertainer. From one, of, so you can't, you cannot write. I want to study medicine at in college. But when you came down to what do you want to be when you grow up or what is your dream? I mean, I suppose some people can have a dream out, outside of college or what you studied to, to have a career in, you know, like, I understand that. But what you're studying at a university level compared to what do you want to be when you grow up should be matching respectfully, you know, respectfully. And it's those simple... Um, thought process that we were looking for, you know, the spelling, as far as spelling, grammar wasn't really a huge um, factor that we were, you know, we were uh, evaluating on how to select 20 students that we were looking for. But just your way of thinking.
So I'm talking to one or another teacher. We just had a conversation about the project because you know he arrived late. He didn't. He wasn't there initially when we came. So I always take it up on myself. Any 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 teacher that I came across who's curious about uh, the project, I always take the time to explain to them what I'm doing um, so they can understand. I can build that connection with them. Yeah, so you know, to, to carry on, um, if if you if as you're hearing, um, one of the other questions that's on the survey also is, who is your hero, right? Um, who is your hero in life? I mean, if you look at the name of the organization, More Hero Foundation, the name More Hero really came about of heroic figures in life, ordinary people who do heroic things, right? So more hero meaning, it's just like saying we need more heroes. So that's where the name come from, more hero. M-U-R-H-E-R-O. So instead of saying M-O-R-E, we, we had it um, to be M-U-R-H-E-R-O, more hero. So we chose to have um, a question to find out what um, these students' heroes are in life. Just you know, so we can we can find out who inspired the who inspires them. Like who inspires you? Because I I feel every person in life, whether it's a mentor. Um, Somebody who inspires you, motivates you. Um, everybody has that. Like growing up as a kid, I mean, for many children, it, to them, it's, it's, it's cartoon characters. Uh, whether it's um, um, Superman, Spider-Man, Batman. When you're growing up um, at maybe two, three, four, five years old, those are who are probably who you are looking at as heroes. Um, because you haven't developed uh, enough cognitive um, significance yet for you to really understand real life heroes. So at this level, I think um, a lot of these kids who are 12, 13, 14 year old are at that stage where they are, they are developing these, um, these capacities of, of having um, significant heroic figures in their lives and so the question who is your hero or, or who who inspires you comes from that and um, I think I think um, for these for these um, uh, and uh, I think I think it also says a lot about um, a student who can put some serious thought into a question where we're asking you who inspires you and who uh, motivates you in life, who is a hero, you know, just a simple question like that. And, and uh, we, we had some pretty good ones, you know, and I was, I was surprised. Um, there is, you know, there's obviously bad ones too, but um, I was really impressed. I can, let me, I can, let me see if I can explain a couple stories off of my head when I, as I was evaluating the, 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 the survey that the students filled out there was okay there's two stories there was there was one story a, a, one of the kids I'm not sure if it was Abu I, I think Abu yes I was very impressed with the way he told he answered the question when he said when we asked the question asked you who inspires you who is your hero and Abu wrote down I believe he said his, his auntie his aunt was his hero um, because his his auntie went and took him from the village and brought him to the cities and put him in school so he can get educated you know and his auntie is supporting his education throughout this the, this, the whole time you know 
and as he was explaining that, um, saying that his auntie is his hero, uh, I was I was impressed because of the value that he placed on education. As a child, he understands the value that education have. So for him to write that story and said his auntie is his hero and he auntie inspires him because. He was in the village, and she went and took him there from there because aunt, his auntie realized this this child is not going to gain any kind of skills by just sitting in this village doing village work. So, you know, and, and that's really how things are in developing economies. You know, um, not everybody can afford to to come to the big cities get a place to live, go to school, pay their, you know, you first of all, you're a child, and a lot of times, if you don't have a relative who is already established in the, in the inner cities or the more rural, urbanized area, you know, you don't really have a good chance of, of going to school. So when you have relatives, aunties and uncles, who care for their nieces and nephews is an incredible thing, you know. It's an incredible thing, and for a child to recognize that, and and he's dedicated, and and I was impressed by him. That's why I, he was one of the students I selected, you know. And and you know, that that's one one boo story. Another story was. Um, I think yeah, the kid name was Sori. Sori was actually 11 years old. Um, I think I, I, we we actually did a case study on the, on these kids too. So uh, there will be more videos coming as we did a documentary. We went to their homes to study their situations. Um, Sori told a story when we asked in the question who your who like who his hero was. And at 11 years old kid, 11 year old kid or 12 year old kid, when we asked him, his question was, his hero was his best friend. Um, and the reason why he said he, his best friend is his hero is because his best friend, which the, his best friend may have a 12 year old, same age. So his best friend lived with his aunt, right? So Sori has a friend. This friend doesn't live with his parents. He lives with a relative, so like his aunt and uncle, right? So Sori told the story that this friend, auntie, was treating him so bad. The aunt never gave the kid lunch to go to school but the aunt always gave lunch to her to her own son when this son goes to school because when you're in, when you're in Africa Sierra Leone a place like um, a, a poor place a poor country like Sierra Leone I mean not natural resources wise but just development wise job wise you know it's it's, it's a very um, on the resource country so one of the most important things is food you know food is one of the most important things because it's not easy to get right so as a child you go into school having a lunch in school was very important you know because you get hungry and I I went through it too when I was young I went through it sometimes I didn't have lunch I had to share with, with some of my friends who may have it, I don't have, the next day I don't have, I may share with them. So Sari told the story that um, the aunt never treated the two kids the same. The aunt always mistreated um, his friend and the aunt always treated her own son better than her uh, nephew. Um, so at the end of the day, the story was very catching to me uh, when he told the story. He said, but uh, 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 in school, Sori's friend was performing better. He 
the the kid be, the came he came first in class compared to um, the the aunt's son who actually failed. So the story was very, um, you know, it, it very it caught my eye. You know, I, I was I was very impressed by it. Um, but the fact that a 12 year old, 11 year old kid can have thoughts like that, um, you know, it was it was I think it was it was very nice. Impressed when I was reading it. The fact that you can say your friend is your hero. The friend inspired him. A 12, 11, 12 year old saying, my friend inspired me because my friend was, my friend, my friend came first in class. When you say you came, because in, in the schools, the primary schools, you are graded when, when the whole class, everybody is given grades. Um, it's not like here in the States when you can be, you, every, you know, like 10 people can get A's in the class, which is great. They can, they can average the, the grades too, but ultimately they, they, they rank the students. All the students are ranked, um, and that's, that's one of the most um, big things in the classes, how you're ranked, um, if you came first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and Sori's friend became came first in the class, even though he was being um, uh, um, mistreated. He still came first, and you know, he didn't have lunch, but he still studied. He, he, he knew what he wanted to accomplish versus, you know, the auntie's son, who did, who actually failed from the story, said. Her son failed, but Sori's friend came first in class, you know, first. So that's incredible, you know, and, and for, for, a, for a child to say, you know, my friend is my hero because of that, um, you know, I was, I was, um, it was, it was so refreshing, so refreshing. So I, I know I'm repeating myself here, but uh, bear with me. All right, so they're, they're still taking the survey. All right, All right just uh, everybody's quiet. We we'll give them, you know, enough time um, so they can think, think process. I believe they also had an exam too this day. There was an exam, so we just came to do it quickly, quickly. Um, you know, yeah, we we, we ask a lot of questions, you know. Um, some some kids, um, you know, said their heroes were the, the president, president of the country. Um, some said they wanted to be like the president. You know, there's there was a lot of, a lot of questions, um, I mean, a lot of answers, different different answers. Um, unfortunately, um, some student did copy each other. <laughs> it's just, uh, I mean, as you can imagine, they're all sitting very bunched up together. You know, a very limited space. So a lot of students they copy each other, and and unfortunately, um, because some some did not comp some may not comprehend the the simple simple um, questions. You know. But uh, I was really impressed with, with some with some of the answers. I re I was really impressed. Um, you know, I, I, and I, I know I remember another another um, another student. I think it was Fina. Yes, they, you know these students always they stood out to me when I read the surveys. I always I always I always like to remember their names. Um, Fina. Also, I uh, was very impressed with one of the questions um, when, I, when we also asked, when we asked um, who, who inspired her and who she wanted to be when she, when she grew up. I remember Fina saying uh, it was a, a lady, I can't remember the lady name, but she was a lawyer. The lady was a lawyer, I guess, now in, I'm, I think in Sierra Leone. She's one of the top lawyers 
and Fina uh, is, I think he was, Fina was maybe a 13 year old girl and she was explaining the story that um, this, this lawyer was her hero who inspires her to be great in life that she also wanted to become a lawyer and the reason why is because um, when her hero was growing up she was very poor she didn't have anything to eat um, she she used to eat gari gari is a form of um, cassava basically dried cassava breaking down into small pieces and so she used to eat gari when she goes to school and gari is a poor man's food in, in, in Sierra Leone and and but but it didn't matter the fact that she was poor eating gari all the time going to school you know her hero had a mindset of, of value in education to, to doing something in life you know and, and because she was uh, um, comprehensive enough to understand that you know that you can be struggling in life you know but if you have a goal a mindset to do something nothing can can hold you down as long as opportunities are given to you you know you can always um, triumph to, to be somebody in life and, and and that story also caught my eye you know Oh, and, and I, I, I guess another, another, another fun one was um, uh, another kid named, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember his name. Oh, man. I'm not sure if it's, if it's Philip. Uh, it might have been. I, I'm not really sure of his name, but um, this particular student um, wrote down there's only a few i think he was one of the only students who wrote down he said if the person who inspires him in life he said the person that inspires him in life was basically me because you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm visiting the school and i'm trying to assist and help these students with their education so he wrote down this this man who is in the class right now um, that's trying to help students with um, with whatever that they may need educationally or, or, or personally through donation of, of, of merchandise um, with school school supplies and, and through by paying for their school fees he wrote down I guess I was I was his hero and and I'm not gonna lie, I it, it, it really caught my eye because I've never seen anything like that, you know, I, throughout the whole survey. And when I came across um, Philip's answer, I was you know I was a little flattered, you know, for him out of all these students, for him to say that, um, I think um, you know also speaks volume of. A child understanding that you know everybody needs help everybody needs a push everybody doesn't do something by themselves right someone is always gonna help you out assist you with opportunities like when you go for a job interviews you know um, you know a lot of time you know people you know may help you with you know with 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 the job because if they work there they can speak to the manager to help you out but um, other times is really someone just sitting down with with you, conversation asking you questions and is entirely up to them if they feel they can hire you for their job based off of your answers or it could be based off of a personal hobby that you have that that 
Maybe they like that hobby too. It could be based off of your intelligence, um, the way you're speaking to them, your vocabulary, how you're articulating your answers. Um, it could be based off of many um, factors, many reasons why the manager that's interviewing you chooses to give you that job. Um, but ultimately, it's up to them. You know, a lot of times it doesn't even matter how you answer the questions, how smart you are. Um, maybe they just like you, or maybe they know somebody who works for the company, and maybe they just somebody who already worked there. You know, that recommendation factor, the reference, a lot of time goes a long way. Building connection with people, you know. Um, so. The opportunities are very important, and, and I think a lot of these students understand it, you know. They're, they're, they're brilliant, you know, very brilliant students. When I read um, surveys, um, they just need the right tools. Um, they need the right tools, the right textbooks to be able to study at home. Uh, right information, you know, and that's, that's one of the, the challenges, the shortcomings in a lot of schools that I visited. Um, you know, and, 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 and a lot of schools in, 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 in Africa in general, not just uh, Sierra Leone, is that the students, the teachers, and the, 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 the structure itself, they all need the right tools in order for these students to elevate their minds, in order for, for them to accelerate you know when they are given opportunities you know to really tap into the knowledge that you know and develop their skills is that a, a certain tools are needed you know that's a no-brainer you know to uh, computers you know the right textbooks you know and and then you know, so even the right teachers you know because a, a teacher a lot of schools are short of teachers because um, they're not on payroll. There's not enough funds to pay enough teachers, you know. So that's what I was told. Um, so that's why we also decided to um, do like a, a, a incentive for teachers as well, where we, we would be rewarding good teachers. And um, as you can see here, where this is, we're coming to the very end of um, of the survey taking. Um, we're just collecting the, the, the forms now that students have filled out, um, just to wrap up. Incredible, you know. Um, just watching it now, it's my first time actually watching the whole scenery of interactions and, and and how some of the students were so focused in, you know, trying to, trying to answer, which I was, um, I was very proud of that. I was very proud of that. Um, and, and different, different instances when I would go to a school and, and just to see how engaging the students are and how engaging the teachers are in, in working with us, you know, recognizing that, um, this is, it's a project that, you know, we all want, want it to be successful, you know. We're there so we can get um, funding or we can get sponsorship from um, companies who um, wants to partner with us and help um, them by, by sharing their support for us, you know, through our, our channels, you know, and our website. So we're... We'll definitely appreciate um, sponsorship, funding, um, any grants that can be uh, donated will be much appreciated. Um, as you can see, uh, uh, education in, 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 in Sierra Leone is, is, is something that, that's very important and is needed. And the tools uh, are needed. And, and so our goal is to try to pay for students' school fees yearly. 
and support the schools with the tools that they need and the teachers as well as time goes on. So please donate. Help us out.